Just a few miles from the southwestern tip of the British mainland, our journey draws close to an end. A place where the Celtic Sea meets the English Channel, a place where myth meets legend. A place chef Simon Stallard likes to both work and call home. This is the Roseland Heritage Coast. This is Cornwall. One of the UK's key innovators when it comes to eating locally caught, sustainable produce, Simon Stallard is as passionate about cooking over a wooden flame as he is about eating produce out of that bay. We're off to pick up a couple of bits, some mackerel, maybe some sardines. We'll see what else they have that come from there and go and eat and drink with the man himself. We've just found an amazing little bonus find en route up there to the fire and the smokers. We've got here a whole load of field mushrooms growing on the very edge of um, uh, a fairy circle or Hexenkreis, which is cross, which is circle, I think that means in German. So we're going to take these and these can be our bonus find. We've got our fish from the bay down there and we've got our uh, premium mushrooms from the field here and we're cooking them there. Happy days. Time to meet the man himself. Lovely to meet you. Very good to be here. Pleasure. Thank you for having us. Pleasure, pleasure. Welcome. This is uh, literally nothing short of uh, a dream come true, really, to be here. What is this? Well, this is the opening cook. Is this the first ever cook? This is it. This is the opening <laughs> run for the for the rig. Yeah. Mate, amazing. What? So this so this rig here is exactly what this is a like wood fired rig. Yeah, it was completely powered by different woods um, with the wood library on the back, and it's basically the idea is that we can go anywhere and cook wicked food with loads of different woods. Where are we and why are you here? But right on the south like coast of Cornwall, because it's so beautiful, it's so underdeveloped and it just feels like really wild. I think that's always something I've just loved about being here or just love being in loads of space with like not loads of people. And that's why this is sort of like all part of it, like sort of cooking out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I love it. And not only that, the, you know, right on the bay, right on the beach, you just sort of get the best of everything. We, so I bought a little bit for the, for the, for first cook, like you said, and we've got mackerel from yeah. out in the bay, yeah, nice. sardines and mussels, and then some beautiful field mushrooms that are growing literally just in your field here. Lovely. And so for you, setting up here, you have the hidden hut first and foremost, which is just down there. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Why did you start the hidden hut? Well, Hidden Hut, we sort of took it on uh, 10 years ago. Um, but the idea, the vision of the hut was actually just to sort of say, this is a small shed where we can just actually bring loads of cool people together yeah. with, and sort of cross it over with mega produce and like great like growers and producers. And that sort of turned into the hub of like just wicked food um, served on the beach. The hut itself as well, you started off doing, um, I think you were doing big dinners, right? Banqueting dinners. Yeah, that was sort of a year in, we started to basically just run out of money and it was, no one was coming at all. It was just like, oh my God, what have we done? But then after that, we sort of said, well, look, let's just, let's just buy a big box of fish um, and then just grill some food and then people bring their own plates, their cutlery, and then we just sit down and just smash like these big sort of suppers um, and everyone brings their own booze and they just had such a lovely vibe. We were like, wow, we sort of tripped over something that sort of then turned into our feast nights that then turned into what they are today, really. So people were literally bringing their own plates along. Yeah, I'm not so, doing the washing up. So good. So no, right, people bring their own plates, they come along and you were doing, you're doing seasonal menus, like same thing for everyone, right? Yeah, it was one dish. We only cook one dish and we always have like a veggie and a vegan option, but the actual sole dish is like what everyone is sort of coming for. Um, and in that we just try and champion like a couple of like really, really, great producers and just like really really like homing on the seasonal product or that's just at that time that's just plentiful and we just sort of take it and then we just serve it and everyone sort of enjoys it together that's the 
sort of bolt of, of the, the harness of the feasts. And um, they've just become really popular. I think not just because people love eating seasonal food, but yeah. it just really brought people together in a really interesting way. And from all walks of life and stuff. And, you know, from we'd have like... Um, billionaires turning up with butlers laying up their table next door to the postie who had like his four tins of cider and his bulldog. You know, and they just like, and I love that sort of mix. That like when you get that sort of real interesting crossover of people, you just end up with something really special. And I think that that's, but the hut, the people make that, not me. You know, we just sort of facilitate it with, and the growers and everyone else with like the event. You know, right. the people make it. They are brilliant fun, and they've become you know pretty well known around here now. So is this if is this kind of a way of being able to take what you've created there on the road, or so, is this separate? Yeah, no, it is. It's exactly that, and it's you know it's ultimately you know we tend to really home in on like the fisheries here, um, but we love the idea of taking this up into Scotland, into the Highlands, in the Alps, like cooking in the snow, and just like really homing in on their trees, their forestries, and just dropping it into like loads of different places. So I think we love what we do at the heart it's the heart of everything that we do but you know the idea of um this just gives us so much more maneuverability um it might not look like it but um it just uh, <laughs> it's quite a unit <laughs> but you know actually we can move into like yeah. lovely areas and, and still host those sorts of suppers or maybe slightly different now but you know that's the, that's the goal amazing it's it's really really impressive um i think it's time to cook and it would be awesome to talk about the wood as well yeah, yeah definitely definitely Let's cook. Let's cook. So, uh, wood-wise, this would be a good moment to talk about it. Wood here, all of this is uh, used for it because it has flavouring in its smoke, or you've got wood for heat and certain woods for flavouring. It's a bit of both, really. I mean, ultimately, they, they all offer different um, heat profiles. So some go, some will give you really hot heat for a very, very long period of time. Some will go up very quick and they'll come back down very quick. So you'll have like a higher a higher heat point. That's sort of, which is like the wood anoraks. We just literally just like focused on like what the wood was doing and how quickly it was burning. And sort of, so we'd actually look at that wood and say, mm, why don't we, um, we just, we only need a bit of heat for like two minutes. We don't need it like for the whole night. So, you know, we'd, we'd then steer into your know, birch or, you know, we'd look for that sort of wood that could just go up and back down. Or we're looking for something that's going to give us a bit more smoke. And, you know, what sort of smoke as well? Do you want that real barbecue smoke or do you want do you want something way more delicate if it's like seafood and stuff? So that was where we sort of introduced a bit more of the fruit woods and stuff. But we are sympathetic with like the amount of fuel. It's not like bags of stuff. It's like, it's a few logs. It's about sort of tailoring stuff. But so the idea of, you know, a lot of chefs cooking like really like nice, beautiful sort of kitchens and they have the extract on and it's quite controlled environment. This here, the wind's changed already three, we've had three shifts in the yeah. last two hours. You know, it was only that minute, a minute ago that we were getting covered in smoke there and now the, the smoke's pulling through. So you're constantly reading the smoke, you're constantly looking at the wind, you're constantly, because that massively affects the cook and you, sometimes you just don't want the kit in the smoke. You know, you want it out or you want it tucked away or you want it in the heat. So um, there's a, that, I think that's, there's as much skill in like cooking outdoors as there is with the fuel. It's a real hundred, you need the ever, it needs tending, watching all the time, doesn't it? Because yeah, does. things are changing rapidly, and, especially and, with the wind. And the, the, the hard part is actually that what you don't want to be, what you don't want to be doing is going, okay, we're looking to bring all of this together in 20 minutes and then going, oh shit, I've got no fuel left or, Oh my god! Everything's just completely burnt out. You know, we've got nothing to cook on, and everything's sort of limping through. So you sort of got to manage, manage your fuel, manage your heat. And it's like the challenge. That's the bit I love of yeah. it, really.
Simon, thank you. Uh, this has literally blown us away. This, this is the pinnacle of our epic trip. Can you take us through exact, what's going on? What are we eating? Well, this is just like a casual like Friday lunch. Sorry, yeah, which is a bit of lunch. Yeah, just a little snack. Um, <laughs> there's uh, just a few sardines here that have been um, just grilled off over some, we, we took them up nice and high on, directly on the wood. So we just gave them, they've got, they have that mega birch sort of smokiness to them. And then we just sat them up and just crisped them up over the grill. These are the allotment courgettes. They've just been hammered with that big salsa verde, which is gonna give them all that vibrance to take out the smoke. Those lovely little sort of like mushy onions in there as well to like really create something quite smart there for like a, a warm courgette salad. Straight into the mackerel, took a nice bit of smoke with the oak. The oak batten just pushed them in and then they took a finish up on the skillet with just like the tips and the ends just using up the last bit of the fennel. So they'll have like a lovely sort of like soft fragrance with that like note of smoke. Straight into the beef. Beautiful bit of beef. Really tried to get that caramelization on it, tried to get that color on it without actually overcooking it. And uh, that's always the sort of like fine line of like, you really want the color, but you don't want to sit there with like a badgered bit of beef. I hope it's not overcooked. It isn't. And then, um, and then here come the mussels. Um, we just finished them on that oak baton. The baton spent, we'd used it, but actually it does add just like something lovely that the smoke can just still come and catch in the shell. So these lovely little sort of smoked mussels, just like, I mean, just try one, man. I mean, yeah. So good. Incredible. Mm. Incredible. So sweet. That salsa verde is amazing. The smoke's in the, it smokes in the background. It's not been absolutely smashed with it. It's like just beautifully there. Well, they took a- they That's took a, really beautiful. They took a skillet cook to start with the, with the cider as well. So that's given them all of that freshness. Right. And then the finish of just like a tiny Another bit. Another one. I don't love it when everything's just like absolutely just like baked in smoke, you know. I mean- It's about, you still want to you still want to taste the, the quality. You still want to taste what you're actually eating, you know. It's about sort of like pairing them together. Phenomenal. Yeah, that beef's amazing. Delicious. Oh my God. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. What a piece of beef. Onion I've been really excited yeah, about. Yeah, try that. Wow. Wow. Very smoky. So the onion is let, like, yeah. I love the way, same with the mussels, it's taken on a bit of that smoke. But again, it hasn't been sm smashed by it, but you're getting all the flavor in there. Yeah, yeah. It, like, it really has taken it on, and then it's cooked down to this perfect, soft, sweet, like, perfectly cooked onion. I think that's, that's the bit, is like you just want, you don't want to be just sitting there with everything just like really overpowered. Yeah. It's delicate, it's just about, they're just like overlaying those flavors, just, and sort of adding something to it, you know, just giving it something, and the textures that you can get with the woods and the smoke, you know, it's just, yeah, it's pretty special. Oh, you know, but it look, the thing is, it looks so, um, you know, there's a lot, it, it's not easy. There's a lot of technique and kind of care and level of attention into that style of cooking to get kind of, you know, what's something that looks quite super rustic, but to kind of be cooked on point. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do at all, is it? That's amazing as well. Mm, isn't it? Yeah, what do you think of them? I love, I just love the courgettes. Yeah. And, Cold that's beautiful. They are delicious, aren't they? I think it's just like, and you'd never go back and sort of say, oh, you know, and there's no onion, there's no garlic, there's nothing there at all. It's just like, you know, the salt, the olive oil, and the lemons, and then just that tiny bit of dressing over the top. But you know, it doesn't have to have the dressing. You can just have like those smoky courgettes. And go the other way, you know, get the woks out and just fire loads of chilies and like crisp up and just like, you know, we've kept this quite classic today, but it doesn't always, it doesn't always happen like that, you know? Oh, yeah. like, let's just talk about this quickly, the sardine. The sardine fishery. That's phenomenal. Yeah, the sardine fishery around here is absolutely mega as well. That bit of fat there yeah, that's like lovely. just oily as anything. That's the time of the year, that's just getting into the end of the season. If you can see it. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Because what, that gives you that? Yeah, yeah, they're just getting themselves ready for the winter. You can see it. Right, so they're... they're just like fattening up. We love, we love working with Will and all of the guys that have boats and stuff and they're always like catching really interesting stuff and um, but small, you know, it's like really small boats. There's no, these aren't trawlers, you know, these are like tiny little fishing boats, day boats that just nip in and out and supply a fish counter in his mum's shop. Yeah. It's wicked, I don't know, I love that. 
How it should be. Cheers to that. Cheers to what you're doing. Thank you for having us again. This has literally been an absolute dream ending to our coast to coast trip. Like, subscribe, come here. Check out the hidden hut. Say hi to Simon. He hi. promises to cook everyone this the moment you arrive. Food plus lunch. Yeah. Food. Nice one. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Simon. Mm. Wallop. Cheers. Let's eat. And so we have it. That was Global Food Quest, coast to coast. It's been an epic road trip. We, we began with oysters in Malden, Essex. We drank the finest cider in Somerset. We've been fishing in Cornwall and we've ended up here with Chef Simon Stallard. Like, subscribe now, and we'll see you next week for more Global Food Quest. Wallet. We've got one round of Cornish Brew. We just need your choice of the smoke. What about cherry plus a little bit of oat? Just oil it up. So the smoke from these will start to come and build up, and then we'll just use the heat over the top, and we'll just we're going to blister and burn the cheese. Your combo of uh, smoke is rolling over the top. Here, it's just rolling over the top of that cheese. Tiny really bit, too much cheese for you and I. <laughs> Let's go and smash it open. Cut through it with it. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> bit of cheese on toast. Cheers, Simon. Cheers, mate. Game over. We can't make any more Global Food Quests. I feel like we started, we set the bar too high. There's nowhere to go. There's, no, there's nowhere to go from here. Thailand.